and a pick swap in 2026. And the Hawks get a nice piece to go alongside Trey Young. Jalen Rose, what do you think about DeJounte Murray's fit in the backcourt in Atlanta? Making moves, y'all. Moves, y'all. On and on and on. You know the Hawks are like that adopted team in my family, Jacoby, because my family lives in Atlanta for over 20 years. Go to a ton of their games, seen them change over their roster, seen them change their front office, add to their ownership. My brother Grant Hill is a part of that as a minority owner. My family, Mariah, Ladarius, Gracie and I, we go to a lot of their games. And let me tell you something, for a Hawks team that made the Easter Conference Finals two years ago, to add with Trey Young, who's established himself as a legitimate superstar, not only scoring the ball, but a four-level score, which is changes the game now. There are only a couple of players, Steph Curry, Dame Lillard, Trey Young, who shoot the ball from 30. And what ends up happening is when you got that guy that can shoot the ball from 30, you can practice a four-point shot to spread the floor. Now all of a sudden you're going to give me another all-star caliber backcourt mate that plays defense, that can also dribble and create for himself, that's going to make the game and the usage of Trey Young go down, but his efficiency go up, and somebody that's going to help him get easy shots also? Like, this is, this is definitely, I, I don't want to, this is definitely the most young, exciting backcourt in the East, like right off the top of my head. And what now the Hawks have done is created another asset to allow them to probably make a move for like a John Collins since that's been talked about so much. So I literally love this for the Atlanta Hawks, but I also have to not ignore that there were two teams in this trade. And for the Spurs, when you look at DeJounte Murray, if you're going to get three first-round picks for him, Jacoby, yep. you actually do that deal. You actually do that deal. Because so, while he is an all-star level player, he's not an MVP level player. And it also tells me at Pop's age that the Spurs are looking more clearly towards the future than trying to win right now. Let me tell you one more thing. You know how I used to scream something real loud about San Antonio? I'm going to scream something else too. This goes if you have a young coach. But since Pop is going to possibly coach this team next year without DeJounte Murray, I got to say this, no Spurs, no! Well, that's my question, Jalen, is what does this say about the future of Greg Popovich and the Spurs? Because the Spurs are clearly in a rebuild. They're bringing in young talent. They've got a bunch of picks in 2025, 26. Do you think Coach Popovich will be there to reap the benefits of this trade? No Spurs, no! But let me, let me just throw something out there, right? Say you're Pop and you don't want to retire. You got to be watching the net situation. You have to be. Let me, let me just bring you behind the curtain. Sean Marks from San Antonio, clearly, who clearly played with Steve Nash, who he hired. Oh, I love this. They played together this. in Phoenix. I love this. And Give it to Pop us wants a chance to get another championship, the Nets look like a good landing spot for that to possibly take place. So if he retires and he doesn't want to do this anymore, all bets are off. But if he's going to stay in the game, I just gave Pop a job. There's your intrigue. There's your theater. Jalen's not saying it is going to happen. Just saying if he's not retiring, and he wants to continue to be a coach and doesn't want to be part of a rebuilding situation in San Antonio, the Brooklyn Nets would be a nice landing place. Keep an eye on that for 2023-2024. Who knows? And we'll see what happens with the Spurs. But let's get back to Atlanta. You mentioned this briefly, but when you talk about the Atlanta Hawks, you always end up talking about John Collins, and he ends up in all of these trade rumors. I'm a huge John Collins fan. I love what he does. He brings the defense to the table. He can shoot. He's a lob threat. He does so much, but it always seems like we talk about him getting traded. Jalen, what will the Hawks do next with John Collins? 
He will eventually get traded. And I just told you that about DeJounte Murray. Like, where there's smoke, there's fire, and ultimately these deals end up happening. And that's going to happen for John Collins, who has great value around the league because there aren't going to be many guys that's going to get you 50, 60 dunks, but also make that amount of threes. He's one of mm. those guys. Pick and pop, pick and roll, can play in the half court, can play in the full court, an improved three-point shooter. He, he worked on his game. But... I think they want to get somebody at that position who can also be a shot creator. See, what happens now in today's game is Trey Young, you saw the PER. DeJounte yep. Murray, you saw the PER. You know what their team is saying about both of those? They want them to come down. And how do you make them come down? You get another front court player that can actually be a shot creator, that can also draw some attention to make the game easier for those guys too, that can get a rebound and now push the fast break himself and make a play for somebody else. And so that's what I think they hoping to do at that spot. But again, in the West, if you don't have a team, if you're, if you're a David Jacoby out there, right, and you're a die easy fan, and you're just like, you know, I just like the NBA, you know, LeBron really, ain't where he got drafted, certain players KD ain't I like. where he I got like to drafted, watch LaMelo. I like to yeah, watch the Pistons. Kawhi ain't where he got drafted, Pop is possibly going to retire soon, or go to the Nets. Let me tell you something. I got a team for you in the West, the Pelicans, and I got oh, yeah. another team for you in the East, the Hawks. Those are two no. teams you can adopt. Jalen, James Harden was traded to the 76ers, and he had an option. He could opt in to get paid $47 million to play basketball for the Sixers next year. He declined that $47.3 million option, and now he looks to make a deal with those same 76ers. However, something tells me that he will not be being offered the full max worth up to $251 million. How do you think this plays out now? And would he opt out if there was not already a deal waiting for him on the table? So it's hard for me to separate church and state. It's hard for me to talk about two future Hall of Famers at different points of their career while they just played together and they're both entering free agency, Kyrie just returned to the Nets. And I'm pretty sure on a one-year deal, I'm I hope Pop's name came up in that meeting. I'll just say that. So now all of a sudden, with James Harden, Kyrie can bet on himself because he didn't show no slow, he didn't show that he slowed down. So it's like, I can flirt with the Lakers, I can throw teams out there, I can sign a one-year deal, because we're going to be doing the, ne the same thing this time next summer. Yep. And the Nets are going to have to do something to make it attractive for Kyrie and KD to stay. Now, for the Sixers, James Harden is like, the end is near, potentially. I need the most years and the most money right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all can have this 47, but how can I get to 100 somewhere? That's what he thinking. Bradley Beal, when he opted out, he tried to get to 200. So for James Harden, he just put the Sixers on notice, Jacoby, because on paper, he's not a part of their team. He's not a part of their team. So now, even if they don't want to give him more than one year on the deal, he let them know that that's all he's taking. So if they're not going to give him multiple years, unlike Kyrie, he's going to walk. He's going to walk. But Jaylen, this is going to be need... fascinating to see how this plays out. But look at some of this video, Jalen. James Harden isn't the James Harden that won the MVP. This isn't the James Harden that was stacking up all those triple doubles in Houston. He didn't look like himself when he was with the Nets or when he was with the Sixers. So if you are the Sixers, how much are you willing to commit to him? How many years do you think this ends up at? See, this is what happens when you trade for a player that was already a depressed asset somewhat, even though he used to. See, the, the things that you're describing happened in Houston mm -hmm. and somewhat with the Nets. He dogged it with the Nets, and he got out of there, and he showed some slow that he slowed down some with the Nets. So when the Sixers were acquired him, yeah, he had a couple of good games against some bad opponents early, and he showed that he's still a really good playmaker. He's still an all-star level player on a good team but he's not first-team all-NBA MVP-level player anymore. 
And at this point of his career, you know what you have to do? Invest in your body. See, this is the other thing. When you're at this point of your career, Jacoby, you got to be getting it better, not worse yep. shape. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so if they're going to be giving you years, it's got to be a commitment over the summer, a commitment in training camp, a commitment to be at every practice, to be with every trainer, to eat right, to be disciplined. James Harden like, nah, I ain't betting on none of that. I want to get paid right now or I can mm -hmm. potentially leave. This is going to be interesting so for the we Sixers. we will find out exactly where that deal ends up between Harden and the Sixers. We expect him to stay with the Sixers. But, Jalen, whenever there's news that involves a Jalen, you will see it here on Jalen and Jacoby. One of your favorite Jalens, Jalen Ramsey, got something that you probably need, shoulder surgery. You always <laughs> hear, <laughs> it's something you two have in common, shoulder problems <laughs> and the first name Jalen. <laughs> let's just real. take a listen to Jalen when he came to after the meds, after the surgery. Jeez. He wants some crackers. All right, let's discharge, baby. No, you can't discharge. Well, these, these, ain't ain't no, no, that's not the... these ain't no Ritz crackers. Oh, I think they're Ritz crackers. They're graham crackers and Ritz crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think let's discharge, baby. Let's discharge, baby. What do you think about Jalen after soldier surgery? I, I, shoulder surgery? I have surgery. to ask you. Ritz crackers, cultural or regional? Uh, cultural. Definitely. Cultural. Yeah. Saltine crackers, cultural or regional? Cultural. Who likes which? Uh, I would say the people look like me like both. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that look like me like Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad that Jalen Ramsey got his Ritz crackers and his Graham crackers. We have a lot more to get to here on the eve of free agency. Is DeAndre Ayton going to stay with